Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, my name is Alec Costolano. I work as the Environmental Justice Coordinator for the Catholic Charities Diocese of Stockton. Uh, we do a lot of work with um, Little Manila, and uh, we're definitely grateful to be here in your space. Thank you for, for having us. Um, so yeah, that's my bio up there. Um, I'm a content creator. Um, I have experience creating various creative projects. Uh, developed and delivered instructional curriculum for several community engagement plans. I've experienced in radio broadcasting, event coordination, project management, community organizing, and I provide consultation to multiple educational institutions and other environmental nonprofits on topics around environmental justice, video production, social media, marketing, and today. Okay, so what is the Environmental Justice Program? Well, we started in 2005. Um, we support our community by providing education and advocacy around environmental justice. And if you're curious to learn more about our work, you can visit our website at ejstockman.org. Okay, so the reason why we're doing this power mapping exercise is because we're part of a grant called the Transformative Climate Communities. And what this program does is it funds community-led environmental justice projects for the most underinvested communities in South Stockton. So there we are at our round four kickoff meeting with all of our other partners. Um, you probably recognize some faces in there maybe. Um, there's William from Public Health Advocates who also does a, a lot of great environmental justice work. Okay, so what is power mapping? Power mapping is a visual tool used by social justice advocates to identify the best individuals to target to promote social change. The role of relationships and networks is very important when advocates seek social change in a social justice issue. Um, so power mapping is identifying what gatekeepers um, are meaningful when trying to advance a certain kind of policy. Okay, so first step to your power mapping exercise is you want to identify what the issue is, the obstacles that are keeping you from solving that issue, and what solutions um, will help you overcome that obstacle. So say you're trying to pass a municipal ordinance or something more local, right? Um, so that would be something like, if in, for example, here in South, we have a warehousing issue. So a lot of people believe that we should put a cap on the amount of warehouses that are allowed in the stuff. So that would be something like the municipal ordinance. There's also state legislature, saying you're trying to advance some kind of state legislature. So um, an example of that would be Gavin Newsom's executive order to ban the sale of gas-powered cars in California. Um, or if you want to take it up another notch to federal legislature, then that would be something like the Clean Air Act, right? Something that um, is enacted throughout the entire country. Okay, so once you identify what your issue is, what the obstacles are keeping you from solving that issue, and um, what are the solutions to overcoming that obstacle, then you can create something called a bubble graph. Okay, so that's what we have up here on the screen. And for the sake of this presentation, we're just gonna say that we're trying to pass a municipal ordinance that puts a cap on the amount of warehouses we have here in Stockton. So there's a lot of bad air pollution here in Stockton, as I'm sure you're aware of. A lot of that has to do with the many warehouses we have and the heavy duty truck traffic um, coming in and out of the city. Um, there's something called Particulate Matter 2.5, which comes out of the tailpipes of uh, gas powered engines. And this causes asthma, this causes lung cancer, this causes cardiovascular disease. So for this presentation, we're going to say we want a cap on the amount of warehouses in the summer. So who would be in charge of um, either passing that, that cap or denying it? City Council. So that's our gatekeeper for this presentation, okay? And when power mapping, you kind of want to think about who influences city council, what's going to ultimately help them make their decision to vote on it or vote against it. So we have some more examples around here in the bubble graph. We have business, so that would be the people who give, who generate tax revenue for the city. Um, those are going to be the warehouse owners, the businesses that um, profit off of the warehousing. 
those are people who are going to influence city council. You're going to also going to have the planning commission, which is a group that um, makes decisions on land use, like what kind of buildings get built in certain kind of lots. Um, they're going to have an influence on city council. You're also going to have community advocates. Um, so that would be like community leaders in your city, like people from Low Vanilla Rising, um, other kind of leaders, say like in the public school system. Um, you're also going to have people like the mayor, elected officials, right? Usually the mayor is a part of city council, so that's definitely someone you want to take into consideration. And the reason why we have a smaller bubble next to the mayor is because that is um, taking another step. I mean, you can make this bubble graph as big as you want it to be, but um, we're going to keep it kind of struck, like small for, for this presentation. Otherwise, we can go all day. So the community influences the mayor because the mayor is ultimately going to want to get reelected, right? Um, so they're definitely going to want to listen to what the community has to say. And then we also have the city attorney up there because if the ordinance that you're trying to pass isn't um, aligned with like the law, then of course they're going to say like, hey, you know, this is some, this is something that we can do. Uh, next slide, please. So once you created your bubble graph, then you're going to create another graph called line graph. Okay, and this is how you're going to um, structure it. You're going to have most influential or powerful in terms of your objective on top. You're going to have least influential on the bottom. You're going to have strongly support on the left. And you're going to have strongly opposed on the right. And we have some examples for our warehousing cap here. Examples of allies and possible uh, opponents. So under allies, we have community advocates. Okay, So this would be people who are advocating for this warehousing cap because they um, believe that there's too much air pollution or whatever it may be in the city. Okay, we're also going to have groups like the California Air Resources Board, also known as CARB, which is um, an agency that's funded by the state government. Um, they're going to have, they're going to be your ally because, of course, their whole job is to improve the air quality in the different cities and towns throughout California. And then you're going to have certain elected officials like Gavin Newsom. And the only reason we have Gavin Newsom up there is because he's like known to be very like progressive in his um, in like the legislature that he supports and stuff, um, but it could really be any elected official that's um, progressive when it comes to like environmental justice issues. So opposition, we have truck drivers up there. The reason why truck drivers are up there because they're a group that directly benefits from the warehousing being there, right? They're the ones who's being paid by big business to drive the trucks in and out of the warehouses. So a lot of the time they might be a part of a union, so they're going to be really organized and they're going to have a lot of funding behind them. So those are people that you have to consider when power mapping. Who are your allies, who is your opposition, and groups, and kind of pick what groups you need to be prepared for. Um, you're also going to have certain elected officials, like say a conservative city council member. So, there's going to be conservative city council members. There's going to be liberal city council members everywhere you go. And just because they're conservative doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be against environmental justice issues, but most of the time they are, right? And we're going to say for this presentation that this certain conservative city council member just happens to have stock invested in the businesses that are benefiting from uh, warehouses. You're going to have other groups, media groups, like, say, an out-of-town newspaper. Um, so they're out-of-town, okay, they're not locals, so they're, they're not going to be that influential. But the media, you wouldn't want to underestimate the power of the media, right? They have a lot of influence, um, and the word gets around quick. Say they write a bad article on the, on the ordinance you're trying to pass, that's going to get spread around really fast and it's going to alter opinions. So you have to consider uh, groups like that. Dude, any of you guys have any ideas as far as opposition? We're talking about warehousing. Who would be somebody who would be in opposition? 2910. 2910? Okay. <laughs> Are we talking about media? And, and, yeah. yeah. What about any other groups that you think might be in the opposition of, of us putting the cap on the warehouse? So four. It would be actually four more warehouses. 
right, right. So what I want to do real quick, just kind of go through the allies and opposition and ask you, what do you think each group uh, should be on the graph? So we have out-of-town newspaper. So as we mentioned, they're not going to be that influential, but they still are somewhat, um, they still do have some kind of power when it comes to these things. Um, and so they're in opposition, so they're going to be opposed, right? They're going to be on the right-hand side of the graph. Uh, where do you think they would be, up top or on the bottom? Yeah. Yes, yeah, they're going to be, maybe not way at the bottom, but they're going to be like right, you know, towards the middle of it. Um, conservative city council member, where do you think they're going to be on the graph? On top. On top, right? On the right hand side, on the top, because their vote may um, decide whether or not your ordinance gets passed. So yeah, they're going to be on the right hand top side of the graph. Okay, truck drivers, where do you think truck drivers will be? So they have a possibility of being in a union, they're organized. Yes. The lowest, what'd you say? On the left side. Left, oh, sorry. Right. Yeah, they're yeah, for sure the right side, yeah. Um, and they're not going to have as much say as a city council member because they're not like directly voting on it, but they can still show up to the um, city council meeting in big numbers, you know, so you have to be prepared for them. So if we were moving these, these onto the graph, it would be right below. Um, your, your council member. Okay, allies. So we're going to start with community advocates. What do you think the community advocates would be? Any ideas? So for sure they're an ally. So they're going to be on the left-hand side in support. Um, and they're somewhat influential. So they're not going to be below the line. And they're not going to be at the very top either. Because like, they're not an elected official. They're just people from the community. But of course, city council is going to listen to the community. So they're going to be somewhat like right here on this end. Not the very top, but in the upper end of the graph. OK, California Air Resources Board. Where do you think they're going to be? Kind of high. Yeah, kind of high, right? They're going to definitely be above the community advocates because if there is really bad air pollution in the city, CARB is going to be like, hey, you, know, you need to do something to clean up your air quality. So they're going to be above community advocates, and they're going to be an ally, so they're going to be on the left-hand top side of this graph. Um, okay, Gavin Newsom, what do you think they'll be? He'll be. Top. Top, yeah, the very top, right? He's the governor of the state, um, and for this presentation, we're just saying that he's an ally, so he's going to be on the left-hand top side, and the very top, because uh, I mean, of course, the governor has a lot of pool in the different cities and towns, right? But they might not exactly be on the very left-hand side of the graph. And the reason is they still have to um, appease the other end, right? The, um, they have, they want to be re-elected, so they're going to listen a little bit to one side and, of course, listen to the other side. They, want, they always kind of want to stay in the middle of things. So he's going to be somewhat in the middle, but at the top. Okay, next slide. All right, so what's next? You've identified your issue, obstacles, solutions. You've got your bubble black graph. You've got your line graph. That's a picture of downtown Stockton. Pretty nice. Right, next slide. Okay, so once you have that, now it's time to create an advocacy plan. Okay? So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to document that. And we're almost done, by the way. I don't mean to talk to you. Uh, but yeah, so you're going to want to document data and stories. So the way that you, so data would be like, say for example, we have a, a, um, a program where we can give out free air monitors to people so they can put them on their houses and go on an app and see what kind of pollutants are on their app. Um, so you're going to want to grab data like that or maybe research data from a local college or a local university. Um, and you're going to want to uh, organize that so you can present it to city council and you go up and say, let's get this ordinance done. And um, you're going to want to get your stories together. So go out into the community, ask people, you know, like, how has the bad air quality affected you? And people might say, like, oh, you know, um, I've lived in this neighborhood all my life, been totally healthy, we built a warehouse down the street, and now I'm raising my kids, and now my kids have asthma. You know, those are good stories. 
to present the city council. Um, they didn't want to get your data and your stories, and you want to present it to local leaders. So, let's, so um, say people who are in charge of nonprofits, in charge of health agencies throughout the city, um, get those local leaders on your side so they can be there um, at the city council meeting when you're ready to present this information. Um, these are usually people who are really heavily involved in local politics, so it's good to, to reach out to them. Um, and then you, you can also do something like gathering letters of support. So say you can't get everyone to the city council meeting with you, what you can still do is gather a, a letter from them uh, expressing their support for the ordinance you're trying to pass. Um, so each letter is an individual, right? So say you get 200 letters, that's 200 letters that you can put on the desk of city council and say we have 200 people in the city going for this ordinance. Um, okay, and then once you got your letters, once you got your local leaders on your side, once you got your data, all your stories, then you can take all that information, organize it, put it on a slideshow, and present it to city council. So this is why we want this warehousing cap passed. Right, next slide. And that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. That's my contact information if you ever want to reach out or want more information about the presentation I just gave. Um, but yeah, uh, we have some time for some questions if anyone has any. And if there's no questions, no question. It's all good. So <laughs> to explain it. Okay. Yes. Actually, I have a question. Yeah. How do we identify the opposition in our allies? Right, right. So say you have your city council, you, you want to do some research on them. The, what their voting history is, what kind of things have they voted for in the past. Um, and that'll kind of give you an idea of where they'll stand when it comes to like the issue that you're trying to address. Um, I mean, the internet's a really good tool, you know, just Google's my best friend, you know, learn everything off Google and YouTube, so just, um, you can Google any name, a bunch of stuff will pop up about it, and that kind of will help you identify these things, or you can just straight out ask them. Exactly. Right. And you can go through their social media history too, what they post, what they like, what, who they follow. Now give you an idea as far as you know, where they're leaning towards, whether they lean more towards uh, conservative values or they are more for progressive values. So it gives you more an idea that um, if you want to find someone who's going to be a champion on your side, you know, you're not going to go with someone that has more conservative values if this particular issue requires more pro progressive viewpoints on it, right? So then you can you know, tailor your message or look to people that are more on your side as far as whether you're progressive or you're conservative to kind of champion your, your, your cause and be one of the first ones that they reach out, you guys reach out to as a group to, to try to champion your cause. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions? Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so like if the youth are trying to get in contact with their city council, like what are some ways they can um, do that, or just like build a relationship um, when wanting to like address some of the issues that they see in the community. Um, so the contact information is usually um, on the city's website. You'll find like their email and their um, like their office number. You could also go to like local events that you know that they're going to be at, and just go up and talk to them. You know, introduce yourself. Say, hey, my name is so and so. Um, I wanted to introduce myself to you and then, you know, ask them what is your position on this, what is your position on that. And city council is like in a, a position that you have to be re-elected for. So they're going to want to talk to you, you know, they're there to represent you, you're the community. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, just realize that a lot of this is really scalable. So right now we're talking one local issue, but um, is scalable as far as if you want to do either a local issue, whether it's we're here at the city, whether whether it's the county, whether it's the state, or whether it's a national push. You know, we've seen our bubbles. Our bubbles going to increase exponentially if it relates to how big the issue is, whether it's something that's going to be decided nationally or whether it's going to be something that's actually in the power of the city council. City council, something smaller, is probably more or less bubbles, but you have a national you know push. Of course, you can have more bubbles. 
you can have more influences. You can have more people that are allies. You can have more people that are opposition. So something like this can be very scalable to, hey, I'm looking for a stop sign at this corner. You know, who can I talk to? What can I do to get the stop sign put in? To, you know, we want to ban new drilling across the United States. You know, then you have a whole lot of bubbles and a whole lot of people that are allies and opposition. Um, or you have a small group that you can talk to to try to get a stop sign put on the corner. Thank you so much for listening to us, letting us in here. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out at any time.